It's the e-commerce master plan podcast here to help you solve your marketing problems and grow your e-commerce business. Cutting through the hype to bring you inspiration and advice from the e-commerce sector and beyond. Here's your host, Chloe Thomas. Hello and welcome. I'm Chloe and it's awesome to have you out there listening because I know just how much you're going to get from today's episode. This is the fourth podcast of our 2020 e-commerce master plan growth series sponsored by Omnisend. Where is the month going? I cannot believe we're almost halfway through. Now we've already gone deep into advertising, email marketing, focusing on profit rather than growth and a packed expert show where my guests shared their lessons learned in 2019. I met today's guest when I was chairing an event for Trustpilot and Brightpearl, and she was so generous sharing details about how she improves sales day to day, I just had to get her on the show. In today's episode, we're all about reviews and customer-generated content. You're going to get advice and tips for how to get more reviews, what to do with negative reviews, and where social media sits in all of this. Whilst the advice and tips do come from one of the UK's largest retailers, I promise you they are actionable by a business of any size. Before we go content crazy, please do check out our sponsors. Omnisend, the marketing automation platform tailored for e-commerce. Omnisend provides sophisticated omnichannel marketing automation tools for sales-driven marketers that have outgrown generic email marketing platforms. Engage your customers and boost your e-commerce sales with dynamic emails, text messages, Facebook Messenger and retargeting ads on Facebook and Google, all from just one platform. Try Omnisend for free for 14 days. Just visit omnisend.com forward slash master plan and get started. This is probably my favourite Amazon review so far for my new book, E-commerce marketing, how to get traffic that buys to your website. I finally decided to take the Friday off and read a book, this book. I have now read it once and will use it many times in the following weeks. A great reference and I'm full of ideas. Can't wait to get back to work next week. Thank you, Mr. K. Heller. If you want to do the same as Mr. K. Heller, you can grab the Kindle or paperback on your local Amazon store now. Or if you're not quite ready to commit to buying the book, head to ecommercemarketingbook.com to get the free crash course, including the first two chapters. And now to introduce today's special guest. Joanna Steele is the Senior Reviews and Customer Generated Content Manager at Argos, or to put it another way, the CGC Queen. What Joanna doesn't know about getting customer reviews and using them to increase sales is very little. Argos is one of the UK's leading high street retailers. Founded in the 1970s, they have over 1,200 physical locations across the UK. They sell 89,000 products, another third most most visited website in the UK after Amazon and eBay. Hello, Joanna. Hello, Chloe. Um, it's really cool to have you here on the show. I'm very much looking forward to hearing what you've got to say about CGC and reviews. But before we get into all of that, could you let the listeners know how you got started off in e-commerce, please? Um, well, my sort of early ambition actually was to be a lawyer. So um, I began a law degree at London Metropolitan University. Um, but discovered pretty early on that it wasn't for me. Um, And I changed my course to marketing in Spanish um, with the ultimate aim of sort of working internationally. Um, After university, I worked in a number of traditional PR and marketing roles across a variety of industries. So media, social enterprise, um, recruitment, Um, And then in the early 2000s, I could see the way the sort of marketing world was evolving and how digital was becoming increasingly important. Um, And so I transitioned into a more sort of digital role. And then sort of more recently, I began sort of making my mark within the UK digital retail space. So leading award winning teams, projects and campaigns. So I spent a number of years working for Mothercare, which is a UK uh, mother and baby retailer. And I did a variety of roles there, which kind of concentrated on digital content, social media, um, e-commerce project management. And then sort of more recently, I now work at Argos um, since 2016. And I've taken on the role of sort of reviews and customer generated content, 
So I've always kind of worked within um, roles that were about customer focus, customer experience, um, and content consumption um, across digital touch points. So that's kind of a snapshot um, of my journey, really. I love it. Um, it I love it when um, guests, how guests choose to explain how their careers have come together, because it's yeah. um, it's always interesting to hear the bits you kind of you focus on. And I love it when the bits which you focus on are the bits which you're doing now, because it's like, yeah, everything's coming together and this is going to be going to be really cool. So let's go straight into the world of customer generated content and ask what is probably, I reckon, the number one question about reviews in e-commerce, which is how do you get more reviews? Well, um, it would be good to start off with saying that um, as our, at Argos, we sort of have a standalone team um, and there's five of us um, and our core sort of focus is on reviews and customer generated content. And actually, that's quite a rarity within retail globally. Um, sort of this area is usually kind of shared um, within perhaps someone's role in digital marketing or maybe an e-commerce merchandising role. It's usually something that just kind of sits on the edge of the desk, isn't it? It really is. Rather yeah. than something which a whole team gets devoted to. I think that, or even a single person, you know, it's like, oh, once every 12 months we go, oh, reviews, maybe we should do something with reviews. Definitely. And it's it's often a bit of an afterthought or, you know, something that we know we should be doing, but it's really not that important. But I think increasingly um, brands, retailers, businesses are really understanding the power of customer generated content um and so at argos we you know we have 2.7 million reviews on our website and we collect annually over 1 million reviews a year as we're sort of market leaders in this space um uh, within the uk um and i think we're always striving to to get more so when i'm looking mm-hmm. at the digital strategy for the year um the customer generated content strategy for the year, volume and coverage is always one of our key objectives um, because it's just always important to make sure that you're getting the volume, you'll see the conversion uplift with the increase in volume um, of reviews and also coverage is massively important. So ensuring that all your products, um, you know, from the popular selling lines to the least popular selling lines still get the reviews and and the volume of reviews required. Um, in order for customers to um, understand how the product works um, and sort of gauge whether it's the right product for them. And so there are many ways in which you can get that content. Uh, From an Argos perspective, primarily um, we get our reviews via email. So if we know you've bought the product, whether it's been online or in store, um, we will send you a review email um, and get feedback for or, you know how you've got on with the product um, and we want we always want customers to be transparent so I think a lot of people really focus on oh we must get a positive review and actually customers just want the truth and um, the good mm-hmm. the bad and the ugly so we're always really keen to encourage customers to give their honest feedback um, and we incentivize our emails as well um, and we give customers the opportunity to um, win in a prize draw so you know we're doing all we can to sort of really uh, get customers to to respond. Um, so yeah, we incentivize. We have category specific triggers. So a piece of clothing, for example, we would ask for a review or feedback um, three days after we know you've got the product. Whereas a piece of furniture, like a sofa, might take you a while to sort of get it into your house. You might be doing redecorating your room, and so actually, there's a longer lead time in which we will ask for your feedback. So that could be two or three weeks after we know that you've bought the product. So we treat each product differently. Um, We understand uh, the different types of feedback that customers give. So for clothing, you know, we make an emphasis on getting customers to take photos of themselves in their clothes. Um, And so there are different ways that you can sort of engage customers to get the different types of feedback for the different types of products that we sell. And you mentioned within there, because that was all fascinating. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> There's people scribbling or, or or driving in their cars right now going, ah, must listen to this one when I actually get to the office. But you mentioned within that that 
you're aiming for reviews that are going to help the customer make the right buying decision and how to use the product. So this isn't just a case of getting some stars and one word. Almost the words and the pictures in the case of the fashion are more important than the star rating in some ways because customers are actually reading the reviews alongside the product copy to make decisions of whether, of whether to buy or not. Is that how you see it happening? Definitely, because I think, you know... <laughs> As retailers, we can give as much information about the product to our customers in the product description. So we can talk about things like the spec, you know, um, measurements, et cetera. But actually, customers can give another angle to it. So, you know, why have I bought this product? What what am I using it for? Where in the house am I putting it? You know, um, I give an example of TVs, you know, from a product description perspective, you know, we can tell you whether it's high definition um you know whether it comes with a smart remote control etc but actually from a customer perspective they're telling us that they're putting it in the kitchen or the living room or the bedroom or that they're using it for sort of family entertainment or they might be using it for gaming so they add another sort of lens on the sort of what they're using the product for um that can help customers and guide them into actually I'm going to use this product for x um, and looking at the reviews, I can see that this is definitely the product for me. So it's about giving that additional information that as a brand or as a retailer, we're unable to give, but customers are able to really give that insight. And I find that um, a lot of businesses are a bit scared of reviews because of the negative ones. And you mentioned that you're as happy to get negative ones as as uh, positive ones. But how do you go about managing those negative reviews? Do they just go straight up on the website and then someone responds? Do you filter them out? What's the what's the process? Just so so those listening can go, oh, OK, it's OK to do it that way. Yeah, I mean we've been on a bit of a learning curve with negative reviews. I would have said a couple of years ago, you know, we'd often get buyers emailing us saying, oh, can we remove this review? Um, and we've always sort of stuck by our guns, really, that no, actually, this is customer feedback. Um, and it's important that the positive and the negative are present. Um, and I think, you know, what we've actually found is that um, when a product has a negative review, the conversion impact and the conversion uplift is higher than when a product has no reviews. Um, and people can find, find that quite hard to believe, but it depends on what the negative review is saying. So if it's talking about a particular feature that you as a customer are not that interested in, um, then actually you don't care that someone's given it a bad um, star rating. And so it goes back to what the detail that's included in, in the review and if someone's moaning about a particular feature that actually I'm not buying it for that, then you're happy to bypass that negative review and still go ahead and buy the product. Um, and, you know, like life, nothing's perfect. And so in order to be able to, you know, be transparent um, and give customers the ability to talk positively, talk about the pros and the cons of a product, then I think, you know, it's a win-win. And I think it allows brands and retailers to to sort of show their honesty, show that they're transparent and show that, you know, nothing's perfect, but actually, um, you know, is this product right for you? Um, and hear what customers are saying about it, the good, the bad and the ugly. So we're always quite keen to, to get negative reviews because I think um, customers find it more believable. You know, they're, they're mm. more likely to believe a product, you know, a product says what it does on the tin if there's a bit of a mixture there, if there are some positive and negative comments, you know, if you see, you know, a hundred reviews and they're all five star, you're probably going to question whether they're authentic. Um, whereas having that mixture really kind of adds uh, to, to the authenticity, if you like, of the product. And, and it makes customers feel more comfortable that actually, you know, these, these reviews are real um, and there's no doctoring going on here. And, and I believe exactly what the retailer is saying based on what customers are saying as well. So, you know, I always say sort of embrace negative reviews, but also look at it in a way that obviously if a product is getting multiple negative reviews, then how can you change that negative into a positive? Who needs to see that? Is it your sort of quality assurance team? Is it your buying team? How can we make improvements to that product um, and listen to what the customers are saying? So I think 
in any which way that negative reviews come to you, there's always an opportunity to sort of um, to benefit from that, whether it's to make changes to the product um, and sort of listen to the feedback um, in order to improve your offering. So embrace the negatives, but don't ignore them. And Definitely. Joanna, I think you said in there that having that that the conversion will be better on a product with one negative review than on a product with no negative reviews. Did I get that right? Yes. So if a product has no reviews whatsoever, um, and then the same product had a negative review, um, the conversion uplift will be higher on the product with the review. So wow. whether or not, so what we see is, is that if customers are not saying anything about the product, as a customer, I have nothing to go by as to what customers mm-hmm. really think about this product. If the product has one negative review and actually it's talking about a particular feature that I actually don't care about, I'm still more inclined to buy it. So it shows that a customer has bought it. Um, and whereas if a product has no reviews, then it doesn't mean that a customer hasn't bought it, but it doesn't fill you with confidence that it's the right product for you. So we've done some tests on this and it actually, like we said, an, a product with a negative review converts higher than a product with no reviews. And um, we've got the data to back it up. And I think that was a real eye opener for us because, you know, we looked at negative reviews as, you know, a reason why a customer would not buy a product. But actually, um, as I mentioned, if the customer is talking about a feature that's actually not really that important to you, you'll kind of discard that um, review and still go ahead and buy it. But actually, if the product has no reviews at all, your question actually, you know, is anyone really buying this product at all? And I guess it's also, um, it's a good piece of ammunition to take back to the buyers to go, no, we're not going to review it, remove the negative review because it's actually helping you sell more product. Definitely. It's okay. Um, and we've talked a lot here about actual product reviews, but I know a lot of people struggle between service reviews and product reviews. Do you do both do you, or do you focus everything on product? We do both. Um, so we do product reviews, service reviews, and we also do financial services reviews. So we've got a financial um, product, so an Argos card, so we ask for reviews um, on our financial services as well. Um, we do treat them differently. We display them differently and we use them differently. Um, so as not to bombard our customers, we do sort of package it up into one email. So we'll ask you about your product and we'll ask you about your service as well. Um, but the service reviews are used for insight, um, which you can feed back to different regions, different stores, store locations. Um, and uh, we don't display service reviews currently, um, mm. not on our site anyway, but we do use a third party uh, trust pilot where you can view some of the service reviews on the Trustpilot Argos page as well. Um, and our Argos financial services reviews, we do sort of display them on our on site, on our pages, which talk about our um, financial propositions. So you've got one system running product reviews on the website, another system running behind the scenes service reviews to improve things. Trustpilot service reviews live on the Trustpilot Argos site and then another one running the finance part. Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of feedback, a lot of feedback, which is used across the business. Um, and I think it's just, it's so important to give customers that confidence um, for all of your products and services um, to sort of make sure that, you know, you know, they're able to really make a conscious decision about what they want to buy from you and how they want to buy it. Um, And, you know, the feedback, as I mentioned, is used in so many ways. Yes, it helps customers, but also it helps Argos make our products and our propositions um, better. And we've spoken a lot here about reviews as a form of customer generated content but of course they're not the only way to get customer generated content are they so are there any other forms of customer generated content as the customer as the cgc queen that you would recommend retailers to focus on and so a lot of our focus at the moment is looking at richer content so we've talked quite a bit about written reviews and star ratings um but actually we're seeing increasing numbers of customers sort of using social media um, to sort of document their lives, really. So, you know, Instagram and Twitter and 
everyone's always taking photos of their food, of their outfits. And so with this change in behavior, we're trying to um, engage customers to sort of take pictures of their products and sort of share them with Argos on our uh, social media hashtags. And we're incorporating that content um, onto our site as well. So whilst reviews um, help customers with their buying decisions, some of the richer content um, can be used for inspiration. So, you know, if I'm decorating my bedroom, for example, if I'm looking for outfits um, for my holiday, you know, I want to be inspired. I want to see how other customers or other people I follow or influencers are sort of decorating their rooms, etc. And so we're kind of tapping into that new behaviour um, and ensuring that we're able to inspire customers. I think historically, Argos as a brand, um, furniture, probably not been that inspiring. Um, you know, if you're going to buy a new sofa or a new dining room table, you know, Argos wouldn't necessarily be um, the place to buy it. You know, it's kind of seen as buying furniture for students, maybe, um, but not necessarily for your family home. And so we had to sort of work on sort of shifting the dial on um, people's perception, um, particularly of our sort of home offering. Um, and so we thought one of the key things that we could do to do this is by using other customers' photos. So if customers can see how this dining room could look um, in a real setup, actually, um, that will help customers envisage, you know, how that could look in their own home. And so what we tend to do when people do buy sort of sofas, tables, beds, whatever it is, any sort of home furnishings, we encourage them to sort of share on social, um, tagging Argos, using particular hashtags. And what we're doing is curating that content and creating inspi inspirational galleries um, on our digital channels. And that's really helping customers sort of see Argos furniture in a new light. So we're kind of not just sort of focusing on written reviews and star rating, as I mentioned, but how do we sort of leverage that kind of increasing customer behavior of sharing images and, and sort of using that, that new behavior um, to sort of improve the customer experience on our digital channels and really engage customers and sort of drive sales as well. So that's the key focus for us at the moment, um, particularly with home and also because we now sell clothing as well. So two kind of um, product categories which, you know, Argos haven't been known for, um, but equally are sort of very fashionable, you know, some really sort of good quality products that we're creating. Um, and how do we sort of get that message across? E-commerce master plan is supported by some of the greatest companies in the e-commerce sector. Here's a reminder of who they are. Omnisend the marketing automation platform tailored for e-commerce. Omnisend provides sophisticated omnichannel marketing automation tools for sales-driven marketers that have outgrown generic email marketing platforms. Engage your customers and boost your e-commerce sales with dynamic emails, text messages, Facebook Messenger, and retargeting ads on Facebook and Google, all from just one platform. Try Omnisend for free for 14 days. Just visit omnisend.com forward slash master plan and get started. In the last ad break, you heard a review from a retailer just like you of my new book, E-commerce Marketing, How to Get Traffic That Buys to Your Website. It's a Kindle bestseller in the UK, USA and Australia. And as past podcast guest Chantal put it, if you run an e-commerce business, buy this book. The Kindle and paperback are available from your local Amazon store, plus it's now available everywhere on audiobook too. Just search e-commerce marketing on your favourite audiobook app and click on the white cover with the blue and pink text. It's time, it's time for the top tips round. Okay, I love this section because it gives me and our listeners some really quick ideas for taking our businesses to the next level. So Joanna, are you ready for the top tips? Yes. Let's go. Excellent. Okay. The book top tip then. If everyone listening to this podcast agreed to take Friday off and read a book to make their business better, which book would you recommend? 
Um, so this is an interesting one. I'm not sure if you've had this before, but um, it's a book that's not out at the moment, but it will be by the time this podcast broadcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, it's called I Am My Brand um, by QB Springer. So QB is a international brand strategy guru, consultant, trainer, um, and she's been in the brand strategy game for over 20 years. You know, she's worked with a number of clients, including Nike, L'Oreal, Justin Timberlake, Rolls Royce, so some big names there. Um, and essentially, she helps organizations better connect with stakeholders from around the world, sort of giving them the tools to adapt and sell to diverse audiences. So she's, I've been following her for years. I attended a seminar uh, about 15 years ago um, of hers and I've been a fan ever since. Um, and the book um, is going to be sort of giving you a sort of toolkit really on how you can sort of uh, really focus on your personal brand. Um, and it will focus on sort of dynamic female brand builders around the world um, and illustrating what it takes to be a powerful sort of female brand in today's male dominated business world. So whilst it's not out yet, I know it's going to be amazing. Um, and so definitely one that I think a lot of people um, would really sort of benefit from. I love it. Totally hot off the press. So hot off the press, it isn't even yet on the press. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I will. I, it sounds really good. So I'm going to be adding that one to my Amazon wish list as well. Okay, Joanna, the traffic top tip, which marketing method do you either prize above all others or think doesn't get the press it deserves? I would say social media. Um, I think, um, you know, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, I mean, they're free. (laughs) Um, And whilst they're forever changing, you know, the rules are changing, algorithms, et cetera, essentially they're a free way or a low cost way to get traffic, you know, a great way to expand your network, get your message out there, get clients, share ideas, be inspired and to connect with your customers to drive sales. So, you know, definitely think you have to leverage the benefits that come with social media. It fits quite nicely with your recommendations around the fashion and the furniture selling on Argos as well, doesn't it? Okay, the tool top tip there, maybe a collaboration tool, a social media plug in a phone app or just a way of working. Is there a cool little tool you use that makes you and your team more efficient from day to day? So an app I use, um, it's called Journal, um, and it's a great way to reflect, um, set daily goals and sort of channel affirmations. So it's something that I try to do on a daily basis. It's like the first thing I do when I wake up takes five minutes of your time, but actually really allows you to kind of be still, um, reflect um, and sort of get yourself ready for the day. So yeah, definitely would recommend it. It's called Journal. Um, Yeah, give it a try. Cool. Uh, Then the growth top tip. If you met someone today who's focused on growing their e-commerce business from 100 orders per month to 1,000, what would be your number one tip for them? Um, I think definitely to leverage your customer feedback. Um, You know, the conversation and dialogue between brands and customers is it's a two way communication. Um, You know, listen to what your customers say about your products and services and use that feedback to improve and develop them. Um, And also, you know, customers listen to other customers. So use them to promote your products or service benefits um, and your brand. Excellent advice. Okay, Joanna, before we say goodbye, could you let listeners know where they can find you on the web and social media, please? And I believe you're also going to tell us about a rather interesting project you're currently working on too. Yes, so I can be found on LinkedIn, um, Joanna Steele, um, aka the CGC Queen. Um, I'm also on Instagram, uh, joanna.diana.steel, and that's steel with an E. Um, so sort of check me out on LinkedIn and Instagram. Those are sort of the two channels that I'm most active on. Um, and yes, at the moment I am developing um, a uh, digital proposition. Um, it's a digital agency, sort of a full service agency combining sort of creativity and technology um, called Dimax Digital. 
And the aim is to help businesses uh, grow their sales online. Um, but the focus is on West Africa. So, you know, Africa is a really sort of emerging market in the digital arena. Um, and it, it's quite in their infancy in terms of how they leverage digital to sort of grow sales. Um, and so I'm working with a number of um, organizations within Western Africa um, to improve um, sort of their digital expertise um, and to grow their businesses using digital. Properly exciting project. Um, I can't wait to hear more about it as it unfolds. And obviously, if you come across any amazing West African um, e-commerce businesses, then I'd love to have them as a guest on the show because um, that anyone from anywhere over the world is good by me. Um, Joanna, thank you so much. We'll put links to all that in the show notes if people want to go and follow it up. So thank you very much for being on the podcast today. It's been fascinating learning about reviews and CGC. Thank you. Excellent practical advice there from Joanna. You now have the chance to take all that she's learnt looking after the reviews for one of the largest e-commerce businesses in the country and what they've learned and the stats they've analysed and how they put it all together to make it actionable in your business to work out how you can use reviews and customer generated content to improve your sales to improve your conversion rate. So I guess the key things to take are make sure you're doing those follow-up emails to get the reviews at a reasonable time span. So she was saying that for fashion and clothing, they ask for it three days after dispatch, whereas for furniture, it's two to three weeks. The customer's got a chance to actually use the product to encourage the customer to write something about their product experience. So there's that extra content, not just the star score, but the extra content that the uh, the other customers can read and use to help them make the right buying decisions. And then don't be scared of those negative reviews because they help customers too. But of course, if you're getting a lot of them on a product, then it's time to go and fix that problem so you, so you don't get the negative reviews anymore. And then when it comes to the social media side of things, encourage customers to share pictures and video of them using the products and then find ways to use that back on your website. Don't just retweet it or share it or like it, but use it back on your website to help customers, both in terms of wider blog content and on product pages to help them work out exactly how that product's going to work for them and to convince them to buy it. If you want to get your hands on the notes from today's show, including the top tips and links and details of the related episodes, then head over to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast. I hope you've enjoyed this interview from our 2020 e-commerce master plan growth series sponsored by Omniscent. We've got another eight episodes in the series for you, so make sure you check them out. We get a lot of people finding the e-commerce master plan podcast for the first time during our growth series. So if that's you, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single episode. Given this is an episode all about reviews, whether this is the first episode you're listening to or you've heard them all, please do let me know what you think of the show by adding a review. You can do that in Apple Podcasts, Spotify or your podcast player of choice. I hope you have a great week and keep optimising. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce master plan podcast. Find out more at ecommercemasterplan.com slash podcast.